Well, here we go, everybody. First trip of the season. Uh, just got the word that there's some bluefin that have shown up. Uh, there have been some giants and some other mid-class fish around, um, but it's kind of been a spotty bite so far this season. So between work and other stuff I've had going on, I just haven't really been able to get out. But just got word that there's a good bite happening, so we're going to go give it a whirl tomorrow. I'm just out here in the yard getting the boat ready. Um, see what we could do. You know, there's been some fish on top water, some fish on the jigs. Hopefully we can get something that isn't 100 inches, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm like looking for the most condensed bird pile. Upon arrival to our destination, we were met with loads of birds, mackerel, and bluefin feeds here and there. Doesn't get much fishier looking than this. We quickly went to work getting into position for the bluefin, and it didn't take long for Colin to get tight. So just pull it in. Nice one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good one, butterball. Do not adjust your TV sets. We are here in Morning in New Jersey. It sure looks like Cape Cod with all the sheer waters everything else and something else that looks like Cape Cod is a dead bluefin hanging off the side of the boat. <coughs> With our over bluefin in the boat, we went back to work chasing the feeds. Very reminiscent of Cape Cod, these feeds were inundated with shearwaters and usually lasted less than 30 seconds. As the wind backed off mid-morning, we yet again had things come together for us when a feed materialized off the bow. This time it was my turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 
I saw that. That was awesome. After grabbing the camera to film this fish, it decided to wake up and had Tom running laps around the Onslow Bay. Give me a belt. Unfortunately, we landed it opposite of the camera, and since it was so close on length, we were all too focused on the task at hand to film. Yeah, baby! Yeah. <laughs> So 
this was. So I just want to take a minute to go over some of the tactics that we used on this particular trip. As you saw, the shear waters were really difficult to deal with. And when you have that, we were seeing a lot of other people were, you know, sticking with the tried and true, you know, mantis poppers and, and floating, you know, topwater lures. And when the shear waters are really bad, what end up, ends up happening is you hook shear waters all day long. And we still had that happen to us. It's going to happen when the birds are really aggressive. But I'll show you a couple ways that we get around dealing with that. So what's been very popular in recent years, and for good reason, are the mantis poppers, specifically these white frostbite white poppers. I have these rigged with BKK 3 aught treble hooks. These still will work. Guys will catch fish on these all the time. The major issue you will have is when the shear waters are really bad, anything that floats is going to get eaten by a bird, most likely before a fish gets a chance to eat it. So what do you do when the birds are really bad? You switch to something that sinks. A Ron Z works very well. These Hoagie Pro Tails work very well. And when the birds are especially bad, like we had the other day, you switch to something like this, an extreme fast sinking siren. This is a deep seductress 155. And this is what we had our under on, on this trip. They sink extremely fast. They wobble and flash like this as they sink. And this got bit basically on the sink. So again, when you're dealing with birds, maybe leave the poppers at home switch to something that's going to sink quickly and get down in that strike zone away from the birds and into the fish.